A few weeks ago, a gentleman had listed the Logic Rail NCE fast clocks for sale. Had three of them, all at one price. And I had been looking at possibly going to a fast clock operation on my layout. So I thought this was a great opportunity to dive into the project. The fast clocks were like new. Open them up, all the original packaging, directions, even the cords were in there. So they had never been used. Location for the fast clock was the next big thing. I have just got three fast clocks. I knew that two of them would be great on each side of the train room for operating crews and one in a staging. But already I found that, hey, a fourth clock would almost be necessary so that my dispatcher could also have one during operating sessions. I used a piece of cardboard as a tin plate so that I could make sure the clock could recess into an opening but still have enough surrounding or a frame so later on in the construction process the screen would be able to be mounted onto like a piece of masonite. So for this step I knew I needed a trip to my local hardware store to buy some one by material so that I could start building a frame for the clocks. Here's a view of the back of the NCE Logic Rail Fast Clock as it sits inside the cardboard frame. A couple of things I wanted to keep in mind as I was going to build a frame for the clock was one, I wanted to make sure that I have enough room for the cords that would be plugged into the back jacks. And also as I read through the manual, it talked about having enough space so if there's any little bit of heat, it could dissipate. Although it sounded like not a lot of heat was generated by these. But nevertheless, I still wanted to make sure there was plenty of space. After a trip to the lumber yard, I bought some 1x3 material and set up shop in the garage and driveway to start cutting the dimensions that I needed to make my fast clock box frames. After cutting both the sides and the tops and bottoms of my fast clock boxes, I was ready for the next step of assembling them. After cutting was done, I put a little glue in the corners and then clamped the boxes. Then with finishing nails and my air gun, I put a couple nails in each corner just for some extra stability. I'd repeat this process three more times on the other boxes I would be building. As I glued each one together and nailed them, I used my cardboard tin plate just to make sure the openings were still correct so that the inside of the fast clocks would fit inside them. For my next step, I ripped masonite on a table saw to the dimensions I would need, both for the face plate of the clock, but also for making a back or just having a couple extras on hand in case I messed up, which does happen from time to time. After I had the masonite cut, I laid it on top of the boxes that it would go with. I would then glue the masonite on top of one side of the fast clock boxes and then also use my air nailer again just to attach them for a little extra strength. Then I would use my cardboard tin plate, trace out the dimensions that I need to cut out so that the fast clock could actually sit inside of the boxes. Finally, I gave the mace knight just a light sanding, blew them off with my air compressor to get all the dust and other debris out of the boxes, and then brought them inside and test fit the rough openings I made to see if the clocks fit inside them as planned, which, surprise, they all worked out perfectly. So I had the three fast clocks that I purchased, plus a fourth one that I built in hopes to purchase another one down the road that will sit at my dispatcher's desk. And here is a view of the back side. As you can see, there's plenty of space for the phone line to be plugged in, the six pin line, to basically daisy chain the fast clocks together. At this point, I made that decision to say, I really didn't want to put this on my command station to be powered. So instead, I had already purchased a wall wart that would provide the power for the three fast clocks I have and a fourth one later on down the road. And of course, wouldn't you know it, there had to be a mess up in my project. I forgot to drill a hole for where the wall wart plug would go into the back of the clock, or I should say, in this case, the side. Only one of the clocks needed to be powered, and then they can be basically daisy-chained 
off that same power um, from clock to clock to clock. So the hole in the side is pretty cruel, but I figure with some of that extra masonite, I can easily put a little plate over that and cover up kind of that ugly looking hole to give it more of a finished look. And here's basically the power supply that I use from NCE to provide the power to those fast clocks just to take the load off the command station. I figure the command station has enough to do during an operating session of just keeping trains running and additional throttles that it really didn't need to be bogged down with running the fast clock also. My first clock I mounted in the staging area of my layout and labeled it clock number one. This was the one that would have the power source from the wall wart, but would also pick up a additional bus line tied into the railroad. Does not have any electric current to it. It's just carrying the information from the cable bus to the fast clock. So when I adjust the time on my hammerhead NCE throttle, the clock also can sync with that. And so the whether I'm looking at my throttle or any of the fast clocks, they should all be on the same time. At the same time, I went ahead and mounted where the other two clocks would go in the train room. This clock here is on the north side of the basement that crews could look at. And this clock here is on the south side of the basement where crews can look at to know the time during an operating session. Now it was time to start running the lines and tying into the fast clocks. The one line to the left is the upstream or the in bus line that is only taking information off the railroad's bus and feeding it to the fast clock. The one to the right or the downstream or out will daisy chain to clock two and clock three in the train room. From clock one in the staging area, I ran the line across my drop ceiling in the train room and dropped the line down to clock number two, which is the north side clock. I would have to cut the line and then put on the phone jack, six pin phone jack, to plug it in on the upstream or inbound side of the fast clock. Then from clock two, I just took the same line after I put a six pin jack on it went from the outstream or downstream line, ran it across to clock three, and plugged it into the inbound or upstream jack. On clock three, however, I'm leaving the other jack open because I will need to run another line from there and extend it all the way out to where my dispatcher sits during a normal operating session. So that leaves plans for the future for where that clock will go. Up to this point, things seemed like it was smooth sailing. I went, plugged in the wall wart, turned on the NCE system, and the clock went through its normal setup of where you basically get a code, CO, and then 1.0. It does that for about two seconds, and then it kind of sinks in with the time that is on the hammerhead throttle. Thought that was great. Clock one worked perfect. However, when I checked on clocks two and three, they were doing nothing. Uh-oh, something happened. I knew the problem must have been something minor, but what was it? All the lines are basically direct through, so pin one goes right to pin one, two to two, and so on. I also had followed close directions of what I needed to do if I was using the bus line to power the clocks, or if I was using the wall ward. Logic Rail does a great job explaining that, but there was one thing that I think they could add to it when you're daisy chaining clocks together that might help you figure out, hey, if you run into this problem like I did, here's what you do to solve it. And this little culprit was the problem. When you're powering from your bus line, you need to have that little jumper touching both pins. I knew I was not doing that, and so I only needed to have one pin covered and the other one could be exposed to avoid a short. So what did I do? I went ahead and moved that little pin like that on all of my fast clocks. Essentially, I didn't need to do that. The first clock could be avoid that jumper, but clocks two and three 
needs to have that little jumper touching both of those pins to keep that continuity of power going on through. About a simple sentence or two to explain that in the Logic Rail NC manual would have cleared that up. Did it take me long to figure it out? No, probably about 10 minutes once I sat and thought about it. But now it's up and running. As soon as I solved that problem, I went right back into my staging yard area, turned the power on, the fast clock went through the CO 1.0 setup, and then synced itself with the time that was on my NC hammerhead throttle. That was on clock one in the staging yard. So then it was, let's go check out what clocks two and three are doing. When I got to clock two in the north side of the train room, it had advanced one minute just like it should, and that clock was operating just like it should. So let's check out clock three. And when I got to clock three, sure enough, it had also advanced, it was on, and it was working just fine also. Well, there you have it. I don't consider myself to be an expert on fast clocks, but I will say this was a fun project that I was able to get done in a number of about four days. And I look very forward to seeing how it works during an operating session uh, this summer. Right now I'm working with the ratios of the fast clock. I've tried the 4 to 1 equals 1 15 minute period equals 1 hour. And that seems to go awfully fast, especially if you're switching in a yard. However, the 3 to 1 ratio where 20 minutes equals 1 hour, that seems to work out really well. So I'll be very curious in the next few weeks as I run a train over the railroad, kind of keep track of the fast clock, of how long it basically would take to get over the railroad in a realistic speed and time. So I hope you've enjoyed this and have learned a little bit from it. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to um, ask them below, and I will be glad to respond and answer to them on the YouTube page. Thank you.